and welcome back to Punchline. Thank you for staying with us. Regional economies are like the rest of the world reeling from lockdowns and COVID-19. Even countries like Kenya, which compared to neighbors, have taken a somewhat much more cautious approach to COVID-19, have eventually been forced to open up. While joining us now to discuss this is East African Business Council Executive Director, Dr. Peter Mathuki, and welcome to the program. Thank you. Now, since the lifting of the lockdown and the various funds that the government has pumped into the uh, economy and its recovery plan, how would you describe the state of business, particularly in Kenya and the region? Thank you very much, and for inviting us to discuss with you this very important topic. I must appreciate that, of course, um, COVID-19 came in as a both economic and health, uh, you know, pandemic, of course, crisis, and therefore we came in to situations that were, we were not prepared at all as a country, as a, as a region, as of course as a continent. And therefore disruptive, of course, uh, nature of COVID has brought in a lot of stress, I would say, shock to businesses in the region. And of course, a number of sectors, of course, you know, tourism, mm. almost uh, going back to zero. Right. Aviation sector, almost at all, not having flights from the month of mid of month of uh, March to date. Mm -hmm. And obviously, uh, sectors like, of course, even manufacturing that have been, of course, depending much on um, supplies from outside this region, again, being disrupted in terms of getting uh, inputs into all this. So all these things came in and, uh, of course, uh, affected uh, how we do business and, of course, business uh, in the region. Of course, again, bringing, on, of course, the growth uh, levels to situations that could be growth levels to some, something between... 2.1 to mm. possibly 3.5 percent mm. and that is what we are going to experience in, in the region um, right. and this is to of course again I must appreciate that uh, again it's taking off slowly and we must appreciate of course governments what they have done in the region mm -hmm. what governments are doing in the region mm -hmm. and what I would say is that of course they have uh, you know put in place some mechanism measures to ensure of course they protect business and that is, again, quite encouraging. We have seen this across, of course, all the partner states of the East African community. All right. Uh, companies like, um, you know, our local River Tex, where the government had, prior to COVID-19, already pumped a huge amount of resources to get it back on track, have had to now survive under these new challenging circumstances, and not just to reclaim their national footprint, but also to compete in the region. What do Kenyan companies have to do now to remain relevant and competitive? We must start thinking more local and more regional. We must now th start thinking uh, by East Africa, of course, build East Africa. And that is how we're going to take advantage. Let's now look, not look at national markets alone, but let's look at the regional markets. Mm. Because when you look at uh, East Africa market, we are talking about about two million you know, plus market. And that is market that we need to look at, of course, as companies, as you prepare, as you manufacture. Think regional, and I think that is the way to go for companies. You need to start now thinking of not relying much, of course, on raw materials from outside Africa, right. but start thinking what can you get from within East Africa so that you can grow businesses, and I think that is the way to go. Right. Um, Kenya and Tanzania have always had a little bit of a tiff about them, and uh, this has been exacerbated during the COVID period. How would you describe the impact of this on regional trade? Uh, I may not want to call it a thief, but I may say that, of course... Um, what would you call it? I, I would call uh, different, they're using different partner states using different approaches to solving a problem. And I'm sure that the way we see, say, COVID was not, pre no, one, no country was prepared for COVID. And therefore, when it came in, each partner state had to find ways of, of course, ensuring that the businesses are secure and people are secure. And therefore, the approaches that have been used by different partner states would therefore be perceived to mean uh, the TIF, but I think is a use of different approaches, but all meaning well. Because at some, at some point, I, th I remember heads of state coming together to think together about how to go and resolve the issues, uh, you know, affecting uh, businesses in the region, particularly mm -hmm. in relation to COVID-19. All right. Uh, but... Uh, 
even though you're being very diplomatic and understandably you're a businessman, so I don't expect much more than that. Um, we've seen that sort of reciprocal tit-for-tat treatment, you know, uh, if Kenyans cannot... Um, if Tanzanians can get into Kenya, then, you know, reciprocal treatment is given to uh, Kenyans at the border. So uh, there doesn't still appear to be much movement on either side, that's the Kenya or Tanzania side, to resolve this uh, difference of opinion, if I will join diplomacy. So in specific terms, yeah. uh, what volumes of trade would you say are at stake and in which sectors uh, if there can't be some sort of amicable uh, resolution to these differences? And believe you me, if you look at the passport that you are holding, first it is East African community, then comes either Kenya, Tanzania. So we are family, we are community. And therefore, of course, as partner states are uh, over depending, depending so much on one another. Mm. And therefore, I would say that Kenya would need Tanzania like any other East African partner states and vice versa. And therefore, when you look at even volume of trade, for example, when we are good times, even before COVID. Mm -hmm. Look at Kenya, we used to do close to 40 flights per week going mm. to Tanzania, to Dar es Salaam. Mm. And therefore, it is in the interest of all of us to keep the market tight and community together. And when, of course, there are these kind of disruptions, it's likely to affect so much. You can imagine now, if we are not doing much as we were doing, okay. what it means in terms of income for Kenya, mm. and what it means, uh, of course, even for Tanzania, because a number of them, again, would come to Kenya to source so, for, so, so many things. So I would say, yes, uh, if now that kind of number is not again uh, traveling to or across the border mm. because of this, that is something, of course, to worry. And I am confident, of course, uh, partner states are working to resolve this. Secondly, you look at even things like tourism. Uh, I would, I would, six million tourists that actually come into East Africa. And when you come to within the region, quite a, quite a sizable number. And therefore, you find Kenyans going into Tanzania and vice versa. Again, this is likely to be affected as we try to, to, to ensure that we normalize operations. Uh, border, again, you, you, Tanzania would bring a lot of uh, you know, produce, fresh right. goods and stuff to Kenya. Mm -hmm. And again, if there are issues, again, that again gets affected. Mm -hmm. Whenever there are those kind of um, times when it will take partner states to agree on a, an approach, hmm. it, it, it brings this kind of discomfort in terms of numbers. Right. I would say at a time when the borders were not uh, operating fully, it affected to close to 70% of uh, both inbound and outbound in terms of the, what was going on. So, so it is a significant problem. Yeah, yeah. So the, right. the, this, I wouldn't say it's a problem, but I would say is it brings a situation that you require partners to come together and have a very harmonized approach, coordinated approach in how we work within East Africa. All right. Yeah. Uh, what concerns you uh, the most about uh, business in the region uh, now going forward? And uh, conversely, what are you also most hopeful about? I, I, would, I would say first, let us think uh, by East Africa, build East Africa. Let us now not over depend much on supplies from outside the, our region. Right. Let's start thinking on how we can start now depending on one another as, as, as partner states and start promoting our own goods and stop relying. Who would imagine at some point our own local companies in Kenya, in East mm -hmm. Africa, would manufacture PPEs, for example, and that is happening. And right. I think that is the way to go. Secondly, mm. we need to start now having a very coordinated approach in terms of how we have different uh, mechanisms to support business. Because if we are okay, for example, in one part in a state and the other is not, then it means we cannot depend on our own as a market. We need the larger East African market. Mm. Thirdly, we need open skies. Mm. Open skies is a situation where our own airlines will have reduced the rates to land in any of the partner states within ESC and vice versa. And that is going to stimulate movement of, of course, of uh, services, of goods within the region. And that is going to spur economic growth. And I think that is how we need to do. Again, thinking local, uh, thinking local in the sense that, uh, sense that we need to start uh, government, encouraging governments, dialogue between governments and private sector to ensure that, of course, uh, mm. a lot of support is coming forth to support uh, companies. And again, that way, uh, I tell you, it will spur growth. It is going to support our businesses going forward. So All I think right. that is that collaboration between uh, private sector and uh, government is critical going forward. That con continuous consultations, and that should be happening in all the partner states of East African community. That's how we keep this market alive, right. and we make sure that, of course, we keep business alive, save jobs, 
and again start even thinking about innovation. How do we ensure that now we start now innovating? Having right. some of the things we are getting from outside East Africa, now sourcing them locally. My apologies, Dr. Ari, we are out of time, but thank, thank you, you uh, for that uh, uh, very incisive sentiment. Certainly beyond just saving jobs, we need to innovate. Um, Dr. Peter Mathuki is the Executive Director of the East African Business Council, and thank, thank you. you for speaking to us on Punchline. On the other side of this break... Let's talk a little Russian with the Russian ambassador to Kenya and we'll be discussing their exploits in science. Are they really the first country to have this breakthrough in a vaccine for COVID-19? That discussion after the break. Stay with us.